This is Suzanne Wagner and thank you for joining me. We are doing the numerology and the astrology for August 27th, 2020. If you add all those numbers together, you get the 21. And if you add the two and the one together, you get the number three. The number three is about that connection between the mother, the father, and the child. It is the father, the son, and the Holy Ghost. It is the Trinity. While spiritually, it is a positive connection in the human world, it can actually feel a bit like a third wheel um, also. It is that place where you can feel out of place and not in alignment with others. Take a look at where you feel out of alignment with the flow or your own natural energy. What can you do to get that alignment back? Finding something to hang on to that balances and aligns you to the orgasmic flows in life is important. Then you feel at one with this universe and it will allow you to feel more relaxed. The astrology today. The word for the day is odd. As the moon goes into hard working Capricorn just after lunch. The first part of the day with the moon in Sagittarius supports learning, growth, and truth while the latter part of the day brings you into the places that require your attention to deal with the practical side of life. Stepping into responsibility is the next level where more commitment is required. While Venus and Neptune want to send you into a fantasy, you might feel a bit floaty and in a daydream state of mind. It could bring your creative expression into new ways to manifest your higher vision. That would be cool. So try not to rush. All things of value take time and there's a huge difference between higher vision and living in a fantasy bond. Practice as much compassion and acceptance as you can. Try to see the effort behind everyone's attempts to interact with others. Give them credit for all the attempts they are trying and the new ways that are adding so many stresses into their life. Focus on those things that create beauty inspire imagination, and give a creative flair to this world. The moon trines Mars and the sun. This could give a good dose of optimi optimism in a world devoid of a more hopeful perspective at the moment. My quote for today. Trust is a process that takes time. Trust is something earned and learned. You cannot trust another if you cannot first trust yourself. There are many that want so desperately to trust that they give this most sacred of gifts without first looking at the container in which they are placing it. That is when a person will experience the three core wounds in humanity, betrayal, abandonment, and shame. Learning to trust is so important in the evolution of your soul. If you learn to analyze and evaluate before you blindly trust, you will discover that those three wounds either do not happen or minimally happen. And then we could live in a world where people are responding less to their wounding and more to the moment from an authentic heart, discerning mind and understanding self. My blog for today. I learned a long time ago that when you meet someone and they have an agenda on a particular subject, that is an indication of a wound that they are still carrying and attempting to protect. They believe that their boundaries will help heal it, but I find that most of the time the boundaries and the rules of engagement that they are using um, are actually a shield of protection. That soul will require you to behave in a way that is going to support them in not getting wounded again. And while I honor that and respect that and think that boundaries are a fabulous lesson, I find that in the advanced stages of consciousness, it actually becomes a hindrance. Because if you care about this person, you will attempt to appease their consciousness and abide by their rules of, and agreements for friendship and relationship. But here's the kicker. That agreement that you are going to try to bend over backwards for them to feel safe will be inflicted upon you in turn. It has happened like clockwork in my life over and over again. An example, the woman who was terrified that her unbelievably devoted husband would stray and have an affair. 
she was the one that ended up having the affair on him. She inflicted upon him the wound that she was afraid would be inflicted upon her. Welcome to this world of duality. It requires you to be constantly aware of your own absolutes in life and to recognize when you hold a particular line, the universe is going to show you the opposite side of that line. And then there's another example. A woman who, because of terrible abandonment and betrayal in childhood, needed absolute truth and honesty in her relationships, ended up lying on a deeply psychological level to herself and her friends, and her choice was devastating for her friends and loved ones. Her way of being honest was that she got to say, well, the universe told me to do this, the goddess told me to do this, so I'm not guilty of anything. I know how to follow the universe, and that was what I was supposed to do. It is not my fault, and my choices and actions were, that my choices and actions were dishonest and hurt others. You will just have to get over it. It was just the way the universe was going to give me what I wanted and asks for, ask for. Such logic really baffles my mind because I look at it from the standpoint of like, do I think that the universe will always give us what we need for our next state of stage of evolution? Absolutely. Um, Do I fault anybody for going for their dream? No, not at all. Um, what I find interesting is the justification that people use when they go for their dream, when they know they're throwing someone else under the bus and they know they're going to do it. And they have talked themselves into some sort of dysfunctional logic that it makes that okay. And I go, you know what? You can do what you want. Just tell the truth. You know, the problem is that a lot of people have learned to survive by lying. It was a survival mechanism. And I, I respect that. Like somebody who has that much ability to lie, they've had deep, deep, deep psychological wounding that they may or may not be able to work through in this lifetime. You know, that's just the way it goes. So I see this behavior everywhere at the moment. And as this world is turned upside down by those who would use and abuse anyone and everything to validate their twisted and dysfunctional rationalizations, I wanted to call it up to awareness. I know that such logic is not in the natural flow of divine law. I know that holding such illogical perspectives have a huge consequence in life and such choices follow you around in this world in ways that you cannot fathom when you live in the land of justification. What you fear will happen to you. It is an indicator of a shadow aspect in play. That shadow is intending to drag you into the position of the victim or the perpetrator. Your choice. It often plays you into places you into the opposite position that you experience the wounding from in childhood. The only way to find balance is to see and love your victim and perpetrator and to have them come together in a way that is integrative, loving, and life affirming. You could be modeling the first story I told you. You could be the first woman and see past the projection of your fear and recognize that you're hanging on so desperately to a person will eventually bore you. And once you have total control, there's no game left and you will want to leave. And from there, you will see that you're, you are controlling situations from fear of loss and abandonment. If you would deal with that feeling in a therapeutic way, you would heal that controlling self and learn to let go and allow the universe to show you something vastly different. You could be the second person that I gave the example of. You could recognize that your need for honesty and truthfulness is an indication that you were raised in a dishonest and fake reality where you did not know what was true or what could happen next. You want the honesty and truthfulness of others so you can read them and see if they are going to be deceived, if you are going to be deceived. But such a person does not want honesty. They want to know another's vulnerability so they can capitalize on it later to manipulate the circumstances to their own agenda. 
They are not seeking truthfulness. They want to have as much information as possible because they do not trust their own intellect and choices. If you cannot be truthful about what your own intentions are, then you will expect others to compensate for your lack. That always leads to disastrous moments that cause karmic pain and suffering for all. So today, really look at, um, I mean, I just sit there and I look at it like really with a great sense of humor because if I do a little funny thing wrong, I mean, I get an instant feedback, you know, sometimes within an hour, sometimes within 24 hours. It's rarely more than 24 hours. Like the universe goes, oh, you did this? And now that person is hurt. So now you're going to get hurt exactly the same way. It's just like it happens so quickly. The more conscious you are, the quicker those corrections come and those lessons come. Now, um, again, this is about the things that you have as absolutes, the things, you know, the things that are just like, you know, I just don't like somebody lying to me. That's not a big deal. It's when this is an absolute like I don't have any friendships at all unless we have total and complete honesty. And I'm like, well, are they being completely honest? I mean, do they know if they're being completely, are they conscious enough to know that they're being completely honest? Because what I find is that such absolutes are really hard to maintain because if I have that absolute, I probably have that wound, which means I probably don't know I'm being dishonest. So this is the other thing, like I'm not mad at anybody because the reality is, They didn't know, you know, they didn't know they were lying. They didn't know they were being manipulated. They honestly didn't know because their wound makes them blind. And that's why we call them blind spots. And people go, I know all my blind spots. And I just sort of laugh hysterically because I go, you don't know your blind spot. That's why it's called a blind spot. (laughs) And almost always those blind spots will surface again and again and again in order for you to kind of look at it and you'll say, why does this thing keep happening? So to me, that's again, the first place to look today. What keeps happening in your life that's repeating and and whatever is repeating, that's the thing to pay attention to. Like that's where you're blind. That's where you don't see something. And then it's like, how is this situation showing up again and again? And what is it trying to show me? How is this situation a trigger for betrayal, abandonment, and shame? Because it's a it's a trigger for one of these and or all of them. And um, those wounds are designed to come up to get us to look at them and address them. And um, and so, again, you know, I say this really specifically. Boundaries are very important in certain stages of development in order to learn safety and to learn to trust yourself. And that is is very important. And I don't have a problem with that. In the advanced levels of consciousness, the gurus would say to me. They would say, um, Suzanne, will you trust that person enough to override your boundary in order to teach you the lesson that you need to learn? Now, that doesn't mean it's going to be pleasant. (laughs) I'm just saying it doesn't mean it's pleasant. Doesn't mean it's going to be fun. Um, But at some point, you trust yourself in the process enough to know that you have to try something really different, which means that you're going to have to let go of those boundaries because consciousness um, and enlightenment is about transparency. It's not about boundaries and shields. Um, And to be able to move transparently through that, that you're not attached to anything. And that's a really hard thing. I mean, I struggle with this all the time. I don't pretend to be enlightened. I just pretend to be on that journey attempting to awaken to my enlightened state. And I think that's what everybody's doing at this point. So there you go. I hope you guys have a good day. Thanks. Bye.